Hello. Well, here we go again. You ready to paint a fantastic picture with me? I thought today we'd do something out of the Rocky Mountain areas. We've had a lot of requests for some mountains that look more like the Rocky Mountains rather than the Alaskan mountains that I do all the time. So that's what we'll do today. I've also asked them to graphically run the colors that we use by. So in case you missed them on the first or second show, this way you'll have a chance to pick up all the colors that we have on the palette. So let's do it. I'm going to start off here today with a little bit of Prussian blue, just a tiny bit of Prussian blue. Okay, and right at the very top, we're going to start by making X's, just all the way across the canvas. There. Now, here you're allowing the magic white to mix with the color that's on your brush, and automatically as you work downward, the sky gets lighter as you near the horizon. So let your paint work, let the brush work. All right, there we go. Now, while I've got blue on the brush here, I wanna add a tiny bit more blue and a little bit of phthalo green, just a little bit. It's very, very strong. And we'll put some water in here. Now pull your water from the outside toward the center and work from bottom to top. And leave a little area open in the center right there and it'll create a, a happy little sheen of light that plays across the water. Okay. Okay, now let me wash the brush. And we wash these brushes with odorless paint thinner. And be sure it's odorless. Okay, now with a clean brush, we're going to start right in the light area and work upward, just to blend the sky out. Now you don't want to take all the little actions out, that's the reason we make it these little crisscross strokes. Don't want to take them all out, your sky will be very, very dull, it'll look like you pull the curtain down at night. There. And the water, we just go all the way across very gently, just enough to bring it together. Okay, let's make some almighty clouds today. I'm going to take the Prussian blue and Van Dyke brown and a touch of alizarin crimson. And we mix these on the brush. Just, just mix them on the brush. All right. Now, figure out where you want your almighty clouds to be and just begin working in little circular patterns. And when you first touch a canvas, if it's not the color you want, stop and change the color. Don't keep painting because this is your world and you can create anything that you want in it. Blue, brown, little touch of crimson. There we go. Just let these big old clouds just float around in the sky and have fun. Clouds are about the freest thing in nature. There. Blue, brown, touch of crimson. Maybe there's another one right over in here. We'll put a couple in so you have practice doing a couple of them. Okay, now clean the brush again. Okay, let's take the fan brush now. And we'll take titanium white. And to that I'm gonna add just the smallest, smallest little bit of permanent red. Now this red is very, very strong. Just want to put a little sunlight on top of these clouds. And go right above the dark, making little tiny circles with a corner of the brush, and begin building these almighty clouds. Let them just flow right off your fan brush. But don't stand in one area and keep working. All you'll do is put a big cotton ball up in the sky. There. Leave some darks in these clouds. And you've probably noticed by now, we don't use any patterns or any guidelines. We just let it flow right out of us onto the canvas. There. This is such a free, free style of painting. All right, over here, we'll put some little highlights. The only guidelines we use in this style of painting is our imagination. Okay. Now, once again, with a large brush, we want to blend just the bottom out and not touch the top yet. We will later, but not yet. 
just the bottom. Just the bottom. Just blend it together a little bit. Don't overwork it. Very, very easy to overwork this. Just enough to bring it together a little. Okay, now I'm gonna fluff it up. Just fluff it. Now, when you fluff this thing up, if you get these little stringies up in the sky, don't worry about them because when you blend it together, they go away. Don't overwork your clouds. They're easy to destroy. And when I was a traditional painter, clouds was one of the things that really gave me a fit. Okay. Now, today we said we was gonna do some, some big brown, rocky type mountains. So let's start with straight Van Dyke brown. A lot of paint on the knife. And we'll come right up in here and make an old muddy peak. Oh, there we go. A lot of paint. We're just pushing this paint onto the canvas. And decide where you want peaks. Since you're creating these mountains, you can put peaks and valleys wherever you want them. Maybe there's another one right in here. Okay. Just get a basic shape of the mountain. Okay, dokey. And I'm going to use a large brush and just blend this out on the bottom. Just blend it on the bottom. Now very gently lift upward. brush again. Now, let's take, let's take burn umber and cad yellow and mix it together. Mix it together. Let's throw a little yellow ochre in there too. Oh, that's nice. Mix it so it's marbly. Don't mix it till it's dead. Let all the little things happen in the paint. Okay, now let's put some highlights in this mountain. And all we're gonna do is touch the canvas and let it flow. Just let it flow. Let's go right up here. There, let's brighten this one a little bit. Oh, there, that's what we're looking for. And we need a highlight over here on this happy little hill. There we are. Something right there. Oops, I see a little light striking that little thing right there. And here we go. Here's another one. There. Isn't that fun? Just let all these things happen. But you can see what's happening in here because you didn't overmix the paint. If you had overmixed it, you would have had one solid color. You wouldn't have all these pretty little things that are happening. Okay, now let's make some shadow color. I'm gonna take a little bit of white, some Prussian blue, Van Dyke brown, and mix all that together. Maybe a touch more white. There is what I'm looking for. And that's Prussian blue, Van Dyke brown, and white. Okay, now let's put some happy little shadows in here. Maybe right along like this. There. Once again, don't overmix your paint. Allow all these little things just to happen. Let the paint break. And by break, we mean leave all these little open spots. Just let it happen. Look at that son of a gun. And we need a little shadow in here. Don't want to forget him. Every highlight needs its own private shadow. There. And a couple in here and there. Like so. 
you know, we can go back with a little more of the highlight color and begin building all kinds of little happy things in here. There. Remember, every highlight needs its shadow. There's a highlight. Watch what happens when we throw a little shadow behind him. He becomes a separate entity. And maybe, 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 maybe there's a little bit of snow still laying in some of the little shadowy areas here. So we take a little bit of titanium white and very gently, following the contour of the mountain, lay in a little bit of snow here. Maybe there's a little over in this little place too, just a tiny little bit. Okay, now I'm gonna take a little bit of the, the blue and white and put a little shadow right on here. Just lay it right on the side. Now with a clean knife, we just bring all this together. Just bring it together. There we go. Bring this one right on back down. Okay. Something like so. Now, I'm going to add a little tiny bit of sap green and just drop it right into the bottom area here, just like so. A little bit of sap green, and you'll see why here in just a second. Okay. All right. Now, with a clean dry one inch brush. I'm just going to begin gently lifting up. Just lift it up and do this in layers and work it right up the side of the mountain. There we go. I'm going to add a little bit of cad yellow to my brush so I can brighten a few little spots. There. A little more yellow. Just pop it in and you bend the bristles and pop it. Boop, boop, boop. Just right on up. There we go. Okay, maybe, maybe there's another happy little rock right out here. Just let these little things happen wherever you think they should be. Remember, this is your world, and you control it. Little highlight color. And a little tiny bit of shadow here and there. And then once again with our one inch brush, we begin lifting just to bring all this together. There we go. Now maybe from this little projection, let's mix up some sap green, Prussian blue, Van Dyke brown, in about equal parts. Green, brown, and blue, in about equal parts. Now then, with a fan brush, let's put some little indications of some little evergreens back here. Right about in here. We just want indications. I'm not looking for detail yet. You know, when you're showing distance in a painting, the lack of detail is as important as when you're showing something that's very close to you in the foreground, you want a lot of detail. Lack of detail can be very valuable too. Just a little something like so. And then back to our little one inch brush. And we'll sort of bring all that together. There. Now, now, that was so much fun, let's do some more. Maybe there's a little foothill that runs right down through here. So let's just start making these little indications with a fan brush. It's a good way to make a lot of trees real quick. And when you see trees way off in the distance, you don't see a lot of detail. You make out basic colors and basic shapes, but that's all. You knew that, though, I know.
Okay, maybe this climbs right on up here. Maybe there's a nice little hill here. And while we got this color on the pan brush, we'll just throw in some little grassy areas underneath it. Just like so. And maybe there's a few evergreens here that are a little bit closer, so they're going to be a little bit more distinct. So maybe there's one right here. And we touch, 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 and just begin building a little tree. There he comes. Now he's a little closer, so there's a little more detail in him. Just a couple of those here and there. Now I'm going to take a little bit of sap green, a little touch of yellow, and the tiniest, tiniest little bit of magic white, just to thin it a tiny, tiny bit. And we'll begin putting some details in here. Just a little grassy areas back in here. Just run right on up the hill, follow the lay of the land. With a large brush, grab the bottom of this and pull down. Just pull it down, straight down. There we go. And then gently go across, just to give it a reflection look, like so. Okay, now we'll take a little bit of magic white. We'll put a very small amount of Van Dyke brown in it, just to dull it down. And we'll make some happy little water lines back here. There. And just let this water line travel wherever you want it to go. The lines need to remain basically straight. Keep your water in the painting. Okay. I tell you what, today let's use the big brush and play a little bit. I'm going right back into this color that I used to make the evergreens. And this was equal parts of blue, brown, and sap green. And load this brush full of paint. A lot of paint on it. And so often we avoid this big brush, and it will do fantastic things. See there? Now, let's make that into a nice little evergreen tree. Just use this old big brush. You know, it's as I teach this across the country, one thing I've noticed, children are so fantastic to work with because they don't know what you do. You paint an evergreen with a two and a half inch brush. You tell them to do it and they do it. This is such a fantastic style for children. My son Steve is 17 years old now and he's been painting since he was 12. That son of a gun's an almighty painter and he makes a happy buck or two. Okay, maybe, maybe another little tree right there. Just let these work right out of your big brush. And we'll put some little grassy areas right out through here. Okay, now, let's go to the other side of the canvas and really make a big tree. A lot of paint in the bristles. Let's get up here in the clouds. Do you ever think you can make a little bitty tree with a brush that big? Pick it up and try it. That's really all you have to do. Okay, now maybe, I don't want him to get lonely. I'll give him a little friend there. Maybe right there, yeah. Okay, while I've got this dark paint on the brush, we'll just bring a land mass right down through here. Okay, now with a clean dry brush, I'm just gonna grab this and pull straight down and create some reflections. Come across very gently. Let's put some little tree trunks in here. Use burr number, with a little tiny bit of white in it. It will come right along here on these trees 
and just here and there lay in a trunk indication. There. You know, in case you missed the last show, I'd like to re-mention again. If there's something you want to see, drop us a line, let us know. We would really like to paint the type of scenes and the places that you want to see. And you can drop us a line, WIPB, Muncie, Indiana. And we'll certainly be glad to hear from you. Okay, now let's take a tiny bit of magic white, a little yellow and sap green. Yellow and sap green. And let's put, let's put a few little trees here and there. There we go. Just let them fall in. Maybe there's one that lives right out here, like so. There's one. Just happy little things. Let's take the large brush, a little magic white on it. I'm gonna go right into this yellow, right into the yellow. Load a lot of paint into the bristles and sap green. Put the yellow on first and then the green on top. And let's, let's put some highlights on these big trees here. There. Just let that brush bounce and play where you think light's gonna strike these trees. In your world, you even control the light. Oh, look at them son of a guns. There we are. Now let's take a little more of the green and yellow and pop these reflections right into the water. Like so. Now I'm going back to my fan brush with yellow and green on it and sort of begin bringing all this together. Just touch, bend the brush upward. Just like so. We'll take a little of the Van Dyke Brown and Burn Umber Mixed and create a little bank here. There we go. A little bit of highlight out of brown and white with a least, least little touch of blue. Just to give it a little flavor. Okay, a little magic white and we'll throw a happy little water line under here. And with a nice, clean, dry brush, pull this down a little, just to create some nice little reflections. And back to my fan brush, a little magic white on to thin the paint. And we'll bring a little, few little things right down like that. Isn't that something? Now, let's go right over here. Create some little grassy things up here in the sun shining. Ooh, look at all those little things. And they happen so quickly. Okay. Maybe, maybe, maybe. Maybe we can put a happy little stone right out here on this. This looks to me like a good place for, for a stone. And we'll take a little bit of the mountain highlight color just put a little highlight on that stone. And let a little bit of it come downward. A little bit of grass underneath it so it comes together. Okay. Then we'll take the point of the knife and put a few little sticks here and there. Just a few. here. Looks to me like he needs another one. Right in here, just to separate these two. There we go. And we 
we could put, what if it is some little dirt in here? Little rocky things showing through here and there. Put a little bit of highlight on that. And with our green and yellow, just gently pop a few little things in there. Like so. And I think we've just about got that one finished. The old clock on the wall is telling me I gotta get out of here, so I'll sign this one. I'd like to wish you happy painting. Next week we'll do a white canvas. So I have your canvas on your easel and be ready to go with us. Happy painting. Um.